the stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, The Man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are reviewing the Guardian cards in A Light in the Fog, the fourth Mythos pack in the Innsmouth Conspiracy Cycle. There are spoilers throughout if you care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support. The Arkham Horror LCG community is amazing, and these people have gone above and beyond to bring you content like these player card reviews. If you'd like to support the channel's goals and see your name on this list, head over to patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice, and claim your rewards. That would be awesome. Without further ado, let's get started. Hello, Nate. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Cameron. It's nice to see you on a lovely afternoon here. I don't know how it is in Red Deer, Canada, but my goodness, it is nice out here today. It's, uh, yeah, it's not too bad. We had uh, an early spring this year, it would seem, so uh, I am glad that uh, uh, glad that it is uh, at least reasonably nice, a nice day to talk about some cards. And uh, we are talking about the Guardian cards in Light of the Fog, the fourth Mythos pack, I believe, <laughs> in the Innsmouth Conspiracy Cycle. The first uh, Guardian card in the pack is Holy Rosary Level 2. It is a two-cost asset that costs two experience points. It has a willpower and agility skill icon. The item, charm, and bless traits. You get plus one willpower. And as a response, after you succeed at a willpower skill test on a treachery, exhaust holy rosary, add two uh, bless tokens to the chaos bag. It has uh, two sanity, and it takes up an accessory slot. I believe this is the first card that we have seen uh, in the game that has swapped classes, uh, Holy Rosary Level 1 being a mystic card, of course, that was produced in the core set, and now we get Level 2 as a uh, Guardian card. What do you uh, think about this one, Nate? Well, while I don't find this particular card super interesting, I find the idea of swapping class cards really interesting. Um, but uh, for this card... It's okay if you want bless tokens this is a pretty good way to get them and guardian does have decent ways of both boosting their willpower and getting a decent amount of skill icons on willpower tests with cards like uh steadfast and take the initiative mm -hmm. so i could see this being okay yeah i was initially kind of i looked at this card and i was kind of like well it's holy rosary i mean it uh the uh, the willpower and uh uh, bonus and the sanity bonus are basically the same as the level zero version so you're not getting anything there um, I guess the blessed trait is is interesting so uh, Father Mateo can take it but I mean he could take the basic Holy Rosary anyway uh, but the I mean you're really playing this for the uh, for the uh, the blessed tokens and I mean willpower treacheries are common enough in the game that it's easy enough to to uh you'll probably run into at least one or two tests a game as long as you can pass those you can bump uh you can dump a couple of tokens in the bag and it seems like a, a lot more uh, i guess an easier way to add blessed tokens than some of the other uh, uh, formats that we or cards that we've seen this cycle i'm thinking of hand of fate from the uh, the insmouth conspiracy deluxe box which forces you to like cancel attacks from enemies or or righteous hunt from in too deep which forces you to engage enemies and uh, of course whenever you add those conditional elements to cards they're they you never know what you're going to get at least here you know okay i'm going to get two blessed tokens whenever i pass a treachery and those are common enough that uh that uh, it's not too difficult to uh to trigger this compared to some of the others. I guess it's also a nice option for some of the other uh, investigators in the game who couldn't take this before. I mean, you've got Joe Diamond, Skids, and and Yorick being the three that immediately came to mind who, who never had access to Holy Rosary. But I also find it kind of interesting that, like, unless you're playing the the Blessed deck and you, and you really want those Blessed tokens, um, you can also just buy Versatile and buy the level zero version of Holy Rosary. And you've basically got, you've paid two experience points for that, plus another uh, four other cards, I guess, that you can add to your deck. So, uh, I mean, having played the, the uh, Curse deck a little bit, 
uh, lately. I guess having more more abilities to add tokens is better than not enough. So um, I would uh, initially I wasn't too excited about this card, but I could see playing it. I mean, if you if you do want the uh, extra blast tokens, this is probably one of the better ways of getting them. It's also recurrable too. Like once you play it, it gives you an immediate benefit and then it continues to give a benefit, which is nice uh, compared to something like Book of Psalms where you have to continue to invest actions in order to get those additional bless tokens. Yeah. Um, or, one okay. or one time events like Hand of Fate and Righteous Hunt where it's like one and done. And mm. Yeah. Um, I think this is okay. It It competes with Police Badge in a lot of decks. Um, because they both boost your willpower, but Police Badge obviously is arguably more generally useful because it provides actions versus blessed tokens. But yeah, a lot I of think in the right builds, this is pretty good. A lot of Guardians also play Hallowed Mirror these days, which I believe takes up that slot as well. So the the competition is pretty tight. I I haven't been ever I've never been really tempted to to play a deck with Relic Hunter in it to play extra accessory slots, but um as the game has gone on we've got more and more accessories that are actually worth playing so well speaking uh, of relic hunter you could double these up too and you could get four blessed tokens every time you pass a willpower skill test which that, would be neat yeah that is uh that's a good point uh that would plus, actually be plus pretty... two willpower it's you're going to pass those tests more often too so it's a positive feedback loop so it's interesting yeah. Yeah, so that would cost you what two, four, or six experience points for that sort of mm -hmm. that sort of trick, which is reasonable, I think. Yeah. So how would you? Uh, where would you rate this one? You know, honestly, this is kind of tough. I don't think it's a. Um, it's not something like in the last packs where we've seen lots of duds. I think this is a pretty strong card. I th think this just suffers from having lots of other also good cards in the same slot. So I think I'd give it a zero. I think that's a pretty fair. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. I was I was uh initially I think if I if you had asked me to rate this card like immediately first impressions, I might have rated it lower because it is it's not very flashy. It's uh you know, I think if they had maybe bumped it up a little bit with, you know, given it a little bit more zing, I guess. Um, I might have been, my first impressions might have been better, but after I sat down and think about it, I think it's it's probably a, a zero. Um, you know, I think there are certain decks that will will pick up this card and they'll be quite happy with it and and they'll use it and then other, and then, you know, decks that, that aren't necessarily interested in the blast tokens will just probably they, I mean, there are so many good options that unless you're really hurting for willpower, um, I don't see myself playing this uh, all that often. But I mean, as cards go, it's it's perfectly acceptable. Yeah, especially in Guardian because that extra sanity soak is nice too. So, you know, I I could honestly see Guardians taking Relic Hunter, and if they needed extra sanity soak, this is a good place to get it. Yeah. So who knows? Yeah, and the and I mean the relic hunter double holy rosary would be a would be an interesting uh, interesting deck to experiment with. In uh, if you really wanted to to jam the the bag full of uh, full of blessed tokens. The second card in the pack is Shield of Faith. It is a two cost uh, asset that costs two uh, experience points. It has two willpower skill icons, the spell and bless trait. Seal up to five bless tokens. If shield of faith has no tokens sealed on it, discard it. As a response, when an enemy attacks an investigator at your location, exhaust shield of faith and release a chaos token sealed here. Cancel that attack. Shield of Faith takes up an arcane slot. So here we have a basically dodge as an asset that you can cancel up to five attacks by uh, elite or non-elite enemies. Um, basically uh, once a turn since you do have to exhaust the shield. Uh, spell trait, of course, is one of those traits that synergizes with a whole bunch of cards. Uh, most of them mystic cards. So if you're interested in, in playing this in Marie, 
Uh, there's lots of options there, including uh, Arcane Initiate, Robes of Endless Night, Uncage the Soul. Um, and uh, the other point is that when you do, uh, you seal the tokens, but when you release the token, it goes back into the bag. So it's not discarded and you can, uh, it's there for, uh, for another use. And the two willpower skill, skill icons are, are always nice. Yeah, this card's a slam dunk in my opinion. I've been really liking Obfuscation, the level zero rogue card that came out in the Insmith Conspiracy. I've been playing a lot of Trish recently, so being able to cancel attacks and get free investigates and evades is super nice. Um, I think this card is pretty good, honestly. If you have a decent bless engine, this is a lot of value. Being able to take free attacks of opportunity to get clues that you crucially need and being being able to complete objectives in time is really critical in this game and cards like this i feel are much better suited than a card like dodge to to facilitate that kind of strategy yeah i've been uh, playing around with a uh, well i've started trying to build a i want to build a, a guardian deck that sort of leverages their tries to leverage their massive health totals and 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 take attacks and cancel attacks and stuff like that and i think this card could uh could be part of that to, part of the solution i'm looking for i guess uh, my only i mean the, the card is really really good um my only sort of caveat with it is that uh the decks i have been playing recently sort of <laughs> shadow this because i've been playing rita a lot and rita doesn't attack doesn't take many attacks so canceling them isn't all that useful and uh i haven't really been playing a lot of decks lately where i'm getting attacked a lot or necessarily need to be canceling attacks and um taking one or two attacks per game is usually that's not what's going to kill you it's usually the usually uh Sort of a combination of of the attacks coupled with uh, with uh, a lot of uh, ping from the encounter deck, throwing a lot of damage and horror at you that you simply cannot uh, soak enough of it. So, I guess that would be my only um, thing with this: is like, really, how many attacks do you need to cancel? And so maybe this opens up that sort of deck style where, like you said, you are you're trying to you're you're taking more attacks of opportunity in order to uh, investigate and uh, and um, I guess primarily I guess it would be investigate or or do mm -hmm. um, you know actions that are on locations and stuff like that so you can you can do all that stuff without having to worry about attacks and then perhaps um, I think the deck I'm trying to build is is based around like maybe level two survival knife where you're canceling the attacks during the uh, investigation phase and then uh, retaliating when you get attacked during the enemy phase so mm -hmm. i think this card i'm going to be definitely experimenting with the with this one to see if it can uh whether it has a home in in that sort of deck style that i'm i'm looking to build because i think that's some some territory that hasn't really been explored all that much in guardian largely because they're just so enemy arrives enemy dies sort of approach there's really no like well maybe we could keep the enemy around for for an action or two it's usually just mm -hmm. like enemy pops its head up and immediately gets it blown off by uh, whatever weapon of choice happens to be uh, in that guardian's uh, guardian's arsenal so uh, i guess I, I the other thing is just trying to amass the blessed tokens for this that's not going to be hard for for somebody like mary but uh having played the curse deck it can actually be sort of difficult to amass a lot of tokens uh, with some of the cards that we have so probably need to be playing holy rosary in addition to um, whatever else you can get your hands on that uh, that throws blessed tokens into the bag how would you uh, rate this one i think this card's pretty good it's hard to evaluate though so I'm kind of lost at what to give it for a rating. My shot from the hip wants to give it a plus one, but that might be too generous. Yeah, I've been going back and forth between plus one and zero. And I think if you can if you can get the blessed tokens, I think this is 
and you're able to, I guess, leverage the whole cancel the attack uh, uh, aspect of it, uh, probably easier to do in multiplayer um, or maybe just sort of changing the way you play a little bit to be like, okay, I've got this card that can cancel attacks so I can take more investigate, more uh, like either investigating or or moving. I mean, there are certain certain scenarios where being able to ca cancel an attack so you can just actually move a little bit closer to the to the objective of the scenario is is comes in extremely handy so i think i'd probably settle on a plus one for this uh, i think if you if you're playing that style of deck this this would be excellent in that i mean having if you can stack the five blast tokens that's a lot of cancellation for a for a scenario, and I think if you were going against, um, like I was thinking about something like the Devourer below, where if you end up right at the end and you're being attacked by Umordoth all the time, like this is one he doesn't get through this right because it it uh, stops elite attacks too, so it's powerful. It stops retaliate. It's also good against swarm too because each copy of the swarm enemy attacks individually. So this can help really soften a blow in the Dream Eaters campaign as well. Yeah. I like this card. Yeah. It also has two skill icons of matching types, which I'm always a huge fan of on cards that are situational like this. And it's reasonably priced in both experience and resources. So, Yeah, yeah, the price is certainly right. Two resources, I think, is... I find that once things creep over two to, like, three... Three is really the bubble for me. Four is, it's got to be really good if for me to play a four cost card. But so I, I I do like the price, and of course the slot is is very good for um, for your typical guardian. Um, I'm not too. I haven't played Sister Mary uh, enough to really know whether the. Uh, I guess it would depend on the type of build whether that arcane slot is going to uh, to be an issue or not. That's going to do it for our look at the Guardian cards in uh, in the Light of the Fog. Light of the Fog, man, I forget that. I've already forgotten the name of the Mythos <laughs> pack. Uh, Holy Rosary and Shield of Faith, a couple uh, more cards that interact with the uh, with the Bless mechanic from this uh, uh, from this uh, deluxe. Uh, or I guess that was introduced in this campaign. Uh, any final thoughts, Nate? I think there's a pretty solid pack for Guardians overall. Yeah, it's uh, it's certainly guardians have uh, received the lion's share of the uh, the bless cards, and uh, and uh, I guess having more the ability to add more bless tokens is better than uh, not having enough, which uh, I I have encountered in in playing uh, a curse deck where I'm just like man if I had just one more level zero card that that added curse tokens I would be set but uh, they're a little harder to come by. Uh, in certain classes so uh, that's good and of course shield of faith man if you need to cancel attacks um, this is a this is a better than having uh, some transient dodges in your deck <laughs>